I'm Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Wall, who has been nicknamed the Blood Detective, for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. Dr. Wald also has several degrees and certifications, including board certification in nutrition. Right. And Dr. Wald, we have some questions that people have sent through email okay. on today's topic of why nutrition. Okay. Now, Phyllis sent us an email asking, oh. if nutrition is so useful for disease treatment and prevention is nutrition the same, why doesn't my doctor recommend diet and nutrition beyond the very basics? Again, a very, very important and fundamental question. Uh, number one, uh, most medical practitioners receive a very limited training in nutrition. So that's, of course, if you're not trained in something, you will, will not recommend it. And if you're faced with questions from patients about the usefulness of this or that nutrient or herb or what have you, or even diet, if the practitioner does not know, then um, he or she cannot give recommendations or, or make comments. Uh, all too often, though, we see comments are made because doctors feel that they're put in a position of having to know, have an answer for everything, so they're saying things maybe they shouldn't. But the number one reason uh, is why the doctors don't get this information is they just don't know it. Uh, if we look at the instance of health problems in medical physicians as well, they're at least as high or higher than the general population. It seems that the average individual knows more about nutrition and preventative nutritional and natural health care than the average practitioner. We need to realize, too, we don't have a health care system in the United States. It's a disease care system, which is fine. We have practitioners uh, in traditional medicine that you know, perform surgery. They recommend medications. They, they symptoms suppress and manage people. There's, I don't, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's more to health than that. Um, the end stage of disease represents uh, just a few percentage points of where traditional medicine really, I think, has uh, and, and is uh, the most impactful. But the other 95, 98% is preventative, dietary lifestyle, manageable. So I think why nutrition? Simply because if we don't eat, we get sick. So on the other hand, if we take that concept a little further, if we don't eat well, certainly we can't heal. And then we take it one step further. If we have a diet that's, let's say, deficient in, let's say, folic acid, which is from foliage, you know, green leafy vegetables, then we are at an increased risk of certain diseases. So we can see that nutrition is fundamental for human health. And because we've said throughout all these different uh, interviews that our food supply now is farmed out of nutrition. We have a lot of empty nutritional foods and um, therefore that makes, uh, in my mind, the need for nutritional supplements and concentrated food products like our dehydrated food powders of fruits and vegetables, all, you know, the, the most important. In a, in a perfect world, Cassie, we would eat a balanced diet and we would, you know, we are what we eat and all that, but that's not true anymore. We are what we absorb from what we eat and the disease and dysfunction is the consequences of the nutrition we do not get. So we can't simply accept our doctor's unqualified opinion that there is no evidence that you taking nutritional supplements or eating more of this or that beyond the basic standard American diet is useful. We know that it is. How do we know? The research has been, been done. It's always ongoing, of course. And for every you know study that might prove that nutritional supplements or eating a certain way is good for us. You'll always find certain studies that are that that don't make that conclusion. That can be very confusing to the public too, and to many um, medical practitioners who are not very well versed in nutrition, because they might hear of some popular study that said, "Oh, you know, don't take vitamin E." But when clinical nutritionists like myself want to f uh, come up with healing solutions for people, it's important that we consider the preponderance of evidence, the negative and the positive, but what does it mostly say? And then we take that information and we say, okay, Cassie, so you have these issues and you answered these questionnaires and we had this certain interview and your lab work showed what it did. So we can then apply that information more or less to an individual. So um, I think that, that the, the answer to the question why nutrition is, without it we die. And for those 
physicians who are not so well trained that say, well, there's just no evidence. Well, what about the evidence of needing more calcium in a form of pills if you have osteoporosis or osteopenia? What about the evidence that says if you take a multivitamin, according to the AMA study, that you reduce your risk of dying prematurely from cancer and heart disease? What about the use of iron for iron anemia? The list goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. So we have these exceptions that someone figured out. Uh, so it's Again, it's a point of, of embarrassment for me on behalf of my uh, medical professionals that they are, are not well educated and they may not go beyond their their comfort zone by saying, you know, I really don't know that area, but rather they say, just don't do it. It makes their lives a lot easier, which it does. Nutrition is not an easy thing to do, particularly through this blood detective sort of way that we do it, meaning that we use... Uh, software programs to help figure out nutritional needs of patients based on you know dozens or, or over a hundred different lab parameters, and we incorporate that in, into a consultation and questionnaires to figure things out for people. So why nutrition? Because you need it, and without it, you're dead. Okay. Now, an interesting take on that is you actually went to medical school. I did. Yes, I went to medical school for one reason. I went to medical school because I wanted to know if there was m- more knowledge there that I could apply beyond what I already knew. I didn't get licensed as a medical doctor, but I did graduate and I got my MD degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I learned uh, that I I knew before but was really reinforced more strongly than ever was that when you go through such a rigid education such as medical school, it is very, very difficult to think outside of that context and that whole disease model. You have brilliant people going to medical school that are passionate about helping people, but all they understand is write a script. Again, beyond the basics of eat well, more fruits, more vegetables, Mm -hmm. eat more often, but most of us can summarize what we've been told by a physician. So we realize that just the education is not there. So I did the medical school thing. I did the chiropractic school thing, my master's degree in nutrition, board certifications, because... Uh, I want to bring more to the doctor-patient relationship so that people can get well faster. So I take that knowledge, but I apply it holistically, which is possible and opens up a lot more uh, opportunities for healing. Yeah, it seems like patients are getting the best of everything. We try. Great. Thank you.